On this episode of Cross Threaded, Jim thinks he's on a real cable TV car show. Babe, we gotta get this car done in seven days. No, we don't. <laughs> Thanks to everyone who has supported Cross-Threaded so far. We raced at 24 Hours of Lemons recently, and a number of people, including staff, came up to let us know they like our homemade show. If you don't know what 24 Hours of Lemons is, imagine Booger from Revenge of the Nerds met Snake Pliskin from Escape from LA, and their horrifying love child began a budget racing series modeled after the 24 Hours of Le Mans. We'll add a link in the description. You can look it up. It's weird, and we love it. Thanks to our fellow racers on Come Monday, Idle Clatter, and Terminally Confused teams for saying hello, and big thanks to Tom of Tom's Turbo Garage for posting about us. Watch his V8 Miata Project Thunderbolt videos. Unfortunately, the kindness of those people has somehow led Jim into thinking that he's got to act like real cable TV car show people do. I cannot believe that Megan would say that we're not on a real TV car show. I mean, we have over 100 subscribers now. That's like gas monkey garage levels no it's not the thing is we got to get this car done in seven days no we don't it's gonna mean a lot of late nights but if we drop the ball on this one heads will roll heads will not roll seven days why does it have to be done in seven days this is not our job i mean honey it is still going to be a car if it takes us eight days or a month or a year. I mean, why can't we just plan out our life so that we have the proper time to complete our projects? Seven days! Oh boy, he's gonna go into one of his rage montages. Honey, don't do it. When you go into your rage montages, you pee. I do not pee! <laughs> Okay, I did pee a little bit there. Are you calm now? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, everybody. Sorry, we have plenty of time to finish the car whenever we feel like it. We would like to be able to drive it at our wedding, but that's over 250 days from now. 250 days. For now though, let's get to work on the car. Yes, as promised in our last video, we're gonna do some mating of the chassis and subframes but first we need to drill some holes so that we can run the brake and fuel lines. Now these holes need to be drilled before mating the chassis because it'll be hard to get a drill into the trans tunnel with things like the drive shaft, the power plant frame, and the transmission in there later on. Yeah, if we try to work around those things, we're likely to get off angled holes and nobody likes those. And we bought the Flying Miata fuel completion kit, which includes stainless fuel lines. It'll make our lives a lot easier and be lots heavier duty than rubber hose. Here's the stainless line and the Cunifer brake line that comes with the Exocet kit. And you can hear Megan saying hello to one of our neighbors. Hey there. After Megan marks the holes with a metal marking pencil, I'm going to use a punch to help the drill go where I want it to go. And when that doesn't work, he's going to use a hammer and a drywall screw, neither of which is meant for this purpose. Now with the holes drilled, it's time to put the Exocet chassis on the subframe at last. We checked the chassis over before we mounted it to make absolutely sure we had drilled every hole we needed to. Yes, and we were absolutely positive we drilled every single one. Absolutely positive. 
And we were wrong. Yes. <laughs> You'll see us deal with that pain in the butt later on. And speaking of pain, someone is about to show poor deadlifting form and hurt his lower back. Do you even lift? <laughs> that really did hurt. I, Mark Ripito would be disappointed in my forearm for sure. You're lucky your spine didn't give up on you for good with a form like that. I am. I am. I'll do better next time I'm lifting a car. Next, we'll make the holes on the front subframe match up to the Exoset chassis. Here are the bolts Exomotive included with our kit, all nicely separated into plastic bags. Put the bolts in facing up with the nuts on top. It would have been way easier to use a torque wrench this way because you torque nuts and never bolts, but after conferring with the owner's group, we ended up swapping them around. Yeah, and we don't think that these nuts will ever get loose, but if they do, we might get a tiny margin of safety with the bolts coming down from the top since they're slightly less likely to fall out. Moral of the story, nuts go down. Yes, they do farther down, the older you get. <laughs> With the front subframe attached to the chassis, we'll move around to the rear and work on those bolts using some very creative alignment methods. Yes, I'm kind of proud of some of those alignment methods. Yes, we should be. Now, we'll torque everything down after adding some blue thread locker, which comes, of course, in a red tube. Now we can put our sweet flying Miata VMAX coilovers into the chassis. But because the Exocet was designed to have a lowered profile using stock shocks, the coilovers make the Exocet very low. Yeah, it was too low. When we put the car down after we installed the shocks, it trapped our jack underneath. Yeah, it did. But thankfully, our neighbor Lenny, the wrestling coach, was walking his dog at the time. He deadlifted the car for us using exemplary form Not and, like this guy. <laughs> and freed our jack. <laughs> The Exocet was first designed in the UK, and over there, apparently, people just don't do aftermarket parts. Yeah, you never hear Clarkson talk seriously about upgrading a car. He's too busy making hover vans and banging mm -hmm. on about World War II. Mm -hmm. You remember that episode where Top Gear UK built that truck with the outboard motor on the tailgate, and then they drove it across yeah. the English Channel? Yeah, I guess, you know, that's a modification, right? Yeah. I wonder if they needed any help getting over the Normandy beaches. Hmm. Interesting. Well, Mr. Clarkson, if you're listening and you ever go back to Normandy, give us a call. We'll bring some Canadians with us and get you right up that beach no problem, old son.
And here I am trying to get a torque wrench in to torque the shock bolt, but there's just not enough room. We made them nice and tight though, and the consensus seems to be that that's good enough. When we took our long bolt out of the car, we noticed it was bent. So we sourced the straight one from our friend David, the parts guy, and we replaced it. Yeah. Now you might also have noticed that our brake rotors look about as rusty as a divorcee's dance moves. Now don't worry about those. We'll take them to our local shop and ask them if they can turn them for us. You also may have noticed that our control arms and subframes look kind of uh, crappy. Yeah, but in the parlance of car shows, that's called patina. They could use a pressure washing and some spray paint, or better yet, a media blasting and powder coat. Yeah, and we might do those things later, but this is a car that we intend to drive hard on the track and in all weather on the road without worrying too much about it. So rather than cleaning up the subframes to match the chassis, we're planning to let the chassis get worn down to match the subframes. Yeah, but babe, call it a patina. That's what real car shows do. Honey. This is not a real car show. Seven days! Oh dear. We better go before he montages again. <laughs> <laughs> now, in our next episode, we'll be mounting some bulkheads to the chassis using a Clico set and a riveting gun that's about seven-eighths as powerful as it needs to be. And we'll start working on some fun stuff, like installing the steering column and denting our stainless steel header on purpose. Yeah. We whack that bitch real good. We really do. Yeah. Now, some of you noticed in our last videos that we're not very good at placing our subscribe annotation button thingy on YouTube. That's my bad. But I'm officially giving up on fooling with that. But do subscribe, please. And if you'd like to support us further, we have a Patreon account now. Find a link to that in the description um, at our website, crossthreaded.us, or on our face tweets. Yeah, a Patreon's sort of like a tip jar. Our homemade show will always be free to watch, but a little support would help bring our production level up. Maybe even up to roadkill levels. Whoa. That high? Yeah. yeah. Nice. Well, until next time, I'm Megan. And I'm Jim. And we didn't get it done in seven days. <laughs>